Welcome to God's Business, where I interview the top Christian influencers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders on how you can create not just a good business, but God's business, where he is the multiplier of your success. If you have not head over to Facebook yet as a man and joined us in the King's Brotherhood Facebook group, you're going to want to go do that. Over 6,000 guys that are all inside a business, they're all wanting to walk, they're in their faith and business together and see how God wants us to biblically build our business and how we can submit our businesses to him. Now on today's episode, we're talking zero to three million subscribers on YouTube in one calendar year, multiple millions of followers across every platform. He's even built over a million followers just on TikTok before it was deleted. Now he's back up to a couple hundred thousand from there. Uh, this guy has also taken that and monetized that business to help others do the same. So a great practitioner of someone who was phenomenal in ministry, built up this huge following, and now take took that expertise and is helping other people do the exact same things. And he talks about what's worked for him and what's worked for other people as other clients that have built to over a million subscribers in a very, very short amount of time. Welcome my new friend, Taylon Michael. Taylor, what's up, man? It's so exciting to have you on the God's Business Show. And it's crazy that even before we hit record, it's like I have to instantly record for this stuff because I already start getting knowledge and stuff from what you're doing prior to anything. But I'm grateful to have you here, dude. Been following you on social now for not even that long. I've been following you. I found you first on Instagram, which is, I don't know per platform what your biggest platforms are, but I know that your TikTok's like 10x even what your Instagram's at right now. Mm -hmm. And then your YouTube is like 15x subscribers, which is crazy, bro. Like, I just have to give kudos to you. 3 million subscribers in 12 months. I saw a post from October 22nd of you getting your million dollar, million dollar. That's what this thing would be over here. The million subscriber plaque. And then you're now at, you're like, can't wait, hit 2 million. Like, bro, you're at 3 million subs. And I know that's just a very, it's just, again, a piece of what you do and just has shown the quality of content, how it's resonated with people. And I think there's just so much value there, but thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah. Hey, it's an honor, man. This is, this is great. I'm hoping to bring a ton of value and, and I believe people will get something from it. That'll bless them, bless their ministry, bless their business and take them to the next level. Yeah, man. And you, you had talked about going from West coast now, not on the West coast anymore. Same as me. Yet for you, pri let's go just right before you started any of the YouTube stuff, all the social content stuff. What were you doing? Because I'm sure things have changed dramatically, especially with the virality and growth, You're kind of strapped to a rocket ship when it comes to content. What were you doing prior to any of the social stuff? Yeah, I mean, quick backstory. Grew up in California, grew up in California, Alaska, and Hawaii. So traveled a lot as a kid. Uh, did not grow up a believer, but got a football scholarship out to Iowa and played college football in Iowa for uh, three years. Got injured my third year in college in Iowa. Went through a really low season of my life where I got hooked on pain meds, got hooked on Adderall. I was drinking all the time, got kicked out of college twice, and my life was in shambles. And one day I just called on God. I said, Lord, if you're out there, if you're real, I need an encounter with you because I, I can't do this on my own anymore. And long story short, I had a supernatural encounter with God where he met me right where I was at. I felt the liquid love of Jesus one night and it changed me from the inside out. And I, I wasn't a guy, I mean, I wasn't the kind of guy that would like, oh, I felt goosebumps. That must be God. I wasn't like that. Like I needed a genuine encounter with God or else I, I couldn't believe. I was a hard believer and I got exactly what I was hoping for. The Lord came in, wrecked everything and uh, made me born again. I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior out in Iowa. And I just finished up college. I uh, got lit on fire for God and I knew that God was calling me to preach. And I was a full-time window washer and also selling supplements on the side, doing personal training, a lot of fitness stuff, and just working the window washing job to pay the bills at the time. And around that time, I started a digital marketing agency as well. So, I mean, I had my hand in so many different cookie jars. But one day I was out washing windows in Iowa, and I was listening to a Gary V podcast, actually. And Gary V was, this was about four years ago. Gary V said, if you're not on TikTok and you're trying to impact this generation, you're making a mistake. Now, 
most people that are going to listen to him are business minded and they would have taken that from a business perspective. But I was ministry minded. So I actually took it from a ministry perspective and I felt in my spirit. That's for me. I felt the Holy Spirit tell me it's time to get on TikTok and start preaching the gospel. And at the time, I mean, man, no, I didn't think anyone would listen. And I was right for about the first 30 days. <laughs> but uh, once I kept going, I just kept posting content. About six months in, we passed the 400,000 mark, 500,000 mark. And I built that first TikTok up to about 2.6 million. And as that continued to grow, I ended up leaving the nine to five. I stopped washing windows and started preaching the gospel online, got opportunities to go preach out in the cornfields of Iowa. We went from gyms to restaurants to cornfields to stadiums. I mean, you name it, we were out preaching everywhere and preaching online. And then just last year, I actually made the shift uh, over into YouTube. So it all kind of started in Iowa, but then now I made the trek down to Louisiana and that's where I'm currently at. And and is that TikTok account still active? You said used to be, or like you touched on that. Yeah. So I built it up to 2.6 million in about a year and a half, just under two years actually. And they banned it for preaching the gospel. So uh, if, for whatever reason, they banned the first account, built another account up to like 300K. They banned that one. And now I'm on my third account and it's at, I think, 282K. And what's, what's crazy about that is that when I went from Billion Dollar Brotherhood, helping these men in business to the King's Brotherhood and announcing, hey guys, like Jesus is the center of this. This is what we're doing now. I actually, I wasn't allowed to go live on Facebook for 30 days after the announcement. Wow. It was so weird. Like I couldn't do anything for 30 days after that. And all I did was just announce that very thing. This is far worse. You had talked about, uh, and I just want to do this before we get into some of the tactical stuff. You had talked about that you cried out to God. For me, like I remember getting a Bible when I was in fourth grade and like throwing it to the side, like literally a van stopped on my way home from school. And instead of like, hey, you want candy? He like handed me a Bible, like still just as awkward. And, and those little things I do remember kind of impressing upon me certain things. I don't think I would have even known, even being 18 years old, I wouldn't have known how to cry out to God, how to receive salvation or even you know have jesus be lord of my life kind of walk me through just so that if there's other people out there looking for that type of experience what was that did you have some people already kind of talk to you beforehand did you have an example of that or did you just feel like god if you're here and then boom all of a sudden you walk through that whole process on your own what was that like yeah that's a great question so in romans 10 verse 17 it says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So when I got kicked out of college, my business coach, who was actually training me in supplement sales while I was doing personal training, he was a spirit filled believer. And uh, I didn't know what any of that meant. I, all I knew was like, oh, he's a Christian. I kind of just put like the same label on every Christian. Like they're a Christian. Yep. They go to church. They probably wear a button up in khakis. That's kind of what I thought when it came to like Christians, you know, they, I put them all in the one category. And, uh, Anyway, he started pouring into me. When I got kicked out of college, I called him. His name was Mike. And I said, hey, Mike, um, I can't go home. I know if I go home, my family will mock me for being a failure. And uh, basically, I had, a, I had a rough childhood growing up. So I, I knew it wouldn't be good if I went home. I knew I was supposed to stay in Iowa because even though I didn't know how to put words to it, I knew God had something for me there. But I, I didn't know how to explain that. Kind of like what you said. I, I was agnostic, borderline atheist. So I, I didn't know how to explain any of that. But Mike took me under his wing and he started sharing the word with me. And the Bible says that God's word is like a seed and the sower sows the word. And as you sow the word, some sow, others water that will come across your path. They'll water the seed that's been sown. And it says God brings the increase when the time is right. So Mike began to sow the word into me as he trained me in sales. And he began to teach me what the Bible said. And I started to realize all these odd correlations that anytime something happened in my life, Mike would always quote a scripture and be like, oh, that happened. You know, the Bible says this. Oh, this about money. Did you know the Bible says this? Oh, you're having these issues with a relationship. You know, the Bible says this. And I started to piece together over about six months that the mm -hmm. Bible very quickly had every answer that I needed in life. Even though I didn't necessarily believe in Jesus yet, I realized the Bible has all the answers. And that was just from him sharing the gospel with me. And then over that six month period, um, he actually asked me if I wanted to give my life to Jesus. And at that time, I, I had faith enough in my heart to, to receive him. And I realized this thing was real. And when I actually called on the Lord, Mike led me to the Lord. He baptized me and I went all in for God after that.
Wow. And and did you have a desire to read the Bible at that point? Because it kind of sounds like scripture was kind of that inception. And I know for me, I, I was just kind of like, why do people read this Bible over and over again? Like no other book do you like open it every day and like, what's it got to say today? Like, that's just weird. So I was like, you know what? I'll read it front to back and then I'll figure it out. I ended up accepting Jesus when I got the Bible. They were like, you want, you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? And I was like, bro, why didn't you tell me this like a week ago? I would have said yes a week ago if I would have known. Yeah. Did you have a desire to read the Bible that came from that guy kind of sowing those seeds? I did after I got born again. Before, I mean, I would kind of like discipline. This is a fun fact. So because he was a businessman, I'm sure everybody that listens to this is familiar with John Maxwell, especially if you're a Christian, great leadership. Uh, he teaches a lot of business leadership from a Christian faith perspective. And Mike gave me a Max or a John Maxwell devotional. And so I would read these devotionals about being a better man, being a better leader. And he always had scripture in there and referenced the Bible. And one day a scripture that popped out to me with, was Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness and everything else basically that you're looking for in life will just be added unto you. You won't have to go around like the rest of the world does and try to get this, try to get that. I like how my pastor says it. The whole world gets all they can and then they can all they get and then they sit on the can. You don't have to live life like that when you actually are seeking God's kingdom. And it kind of clicked for me. It might've been the first time I received revelation. And I realized this is why Mike is different. He just seeks God's kingdom first. So if I do things for God's kingdom, maybe God will bless me like he blesses Mike. And then after that, it kind of clicked and I began to actually enjoy reading the Bible. <laughs> That's so interesting. It, it reminds me a little bit of, I was just reading about David's life. I love people's stories. This is why I interview reading about someone in the Bible is kind of like an interview like this. And, and David's carrying the ark and bringing it basically back to his house. And I remember, you know, someone touched it and when it was going to fall and they died. Right. And he was like, mm -hmm. I'm not putting this in my house. I'm putting it in someone else's house. And then what it said is like that house was blessed, like where the Lord was because it was in that person's household, they were blessed. And it says three months later, later, David's like, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go get that back and bring it back over here now. And then that's when he talks about, you'll build a house for me of cedar and and it just, again, I looked at it and I was like, man, David's not that much different. Now, again, I'm not anyone's pastor, so no one rip on me for this. But I was like, he, the Lord was blessing that guy's house. And he was like, yo, three months later, he was like, I know I, I got upset three months ago, but I see the blessing of the Lord on this person's home. I mm -hmm. want that in my home. And I, I, I believe that now is everyone has access to the Holy Spirit through Christ's death and resurrection. So I just think that was so cool. And and how that goodness of God leads people to repentance and how it's not just us just overcoming difficulty, but oftentimes God will use, like this is a blessing to this guy. Hey, he's really putting the Lord first and I see his life prospering. I wouldn't mind some of that in my life. I just think it's really cool, man. So thank you for that example. I, I know that you started off on TikTok and I know that now and you guys quickly grew what was the big decision like to go multi-platform? Like you went from TikTok and then you said, did you go straight to YouTube after you got deleted? Like how was, what was that like when you expanded multi-platform and what made you go all in on YouTube? It seems like that's your number one. Can you kind of break that down for me? What is your number one, how you guys went multi-platform? Yeah. So when I started to grow on TikTok, I, I waited about a year before I actually started a YouTube channel, which was a mistake. So if anybody listens, if you start blowing up on TikTok, anytime you realize that you're going to go all in with uh, becoming a social media influencer of any type, building your business online, building your ministry, anything you're going to do online, I believe you should jump multi-platform right out the gate. However, I would focus on the one that's having the most success. I'd put most of your attention on that and ride the momentum and then delegate otherwise. But for me, I didn't even start a YouTube channel until about a year down the road after I had already passed like a million and a half on TikTok. So I actually missed out on a major opportunity to shift my platform over to YouTube. So when I finally started my YouTube channel, I was stuck at about 7K. I couldn't convert anybody from TikTok. And it was really irritating me, but I kind of just left it. And I was stuck at 7K on YouTube for about a year and just kept pressing on the TikTok. Now, when TikTok exploded the second time from 1.5 to 2.6 million, happened in like 30 days or something, just went another explosion. Now, when that happened, all of a sudden I started getting more shipped over to YouTube, but then I got banned on TikTok. 
Now, when I got banned on TikTok, that was right when YouTube shorts really started to, to blow up and I saw people were getting success. And I saw other people that were having success in my genre, the Christian influencer genre on TikTok, were now shifting over to YouTube. And I kind of went, scouted out their uh, profiles and a guy on my team actually said, dude, what you're doing on TikTok, you can just do it on YouTube and you'll get the same results. So we doubled down and we went all in on YouTube. And I believe in the first 90 days, we hit our 100K. And then between day 90 and month six, we passed a million. And then after month six, it was it was off to the races. And we hit 3 million in just about 11 months. Bro, so insane, first off. And, and when you're touching on, for the people out there, TikTok, you have the ability to link your account. So it's very easy for people to look at your Instagram, YouTube. Am I missing any other ones? I think just Twitter? YouTube and Instagram. I think you can do Twitter too. I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't, mm -hmm. I haven't personally messed around with Twitter much, even though I know it'd be good for us. And, and so because of that, you can take, if you go viral on Twitter and you gain a million followers in 30 days, which would be a wish and a dream and, and amazing. <laughs> then there's an opportunity for them to go check out your YouTube and, and check that out as well. Obviously, it was a weird blessing in disguise that you got banned on that platform, but then you obviously went all in on YouTube. What's the, kind of show me the behind the scenes. I'd love to hear from you because like as a business owner, right, we're looking at content as like one of the reasons why we don't go all in on content is because we're only looking at, does this grow the business? You know, so for years, I was just kind of like, that does the business really grow if this happens for for you there obviously has to be some type of business component or maybe just let me know is there a business component to this for you because you have to have a team to run an operation right even a church uh, one of my great mentors this church is like twelve thousand. i know how much their buildings cost i know how much they you know how, how much they have to pay 150 employees every single month and so it's ran like a business but you know just for the sake of that this is a business guys kind of tell me how how, how big is your guys's team to run something like this and and how do you fund a team like that through this yeah so we i mean being a ministry first uh we have four eh, five i guess now five part-time staff all remote that basically handle all the editing side of things, keeping up with awesome. partners, uh, stuff like that, running uh, basically everything that we need on that end. So it's only a five person team. It's not, it's not super massive, but I mean, they do a phenomenal job and we're adding people. We just added a new member the other day. So we're adding people pretty regularly, which is awesome. But from the business side, uh, what happened was back in January, the Lord actually told me to start showing other people how to grow on YouTube like he showed me. We were doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. And on day 14, we had all night prayer. And at 2 a.m., it was just about, well, it might have been earlier. I think it was like 1 a.m., something like that. Around midnight, right around there, the late hours of the night. <laughs> and uh, we were praying. And all of a sudden, I knew in my spirit, it was like the Lord dropped it in my, in my spirit. He said, I want you to start raising up online evangelists and teach them to do what I've taught you to do over the last four years online. And when that happened, I launched what I call my Kingdom Accelerator program, which is now a mastermind for people that actually want to become online evangelists or for churches to build their ministry. And it's an actual consulting group where we now have just over 250 members and uh, we have 60 people in our highest program right now that are crushing it. We've had uh, over, I think, 16 people now grow at least 100K on YouTube in 90 days or less. We just had wow. our seventh person hit a million subscribers in under a year that we helped to grow. And we've reached over 2 billion views on different social media platforms preaching the gospel online. And so from the business side, that that is basically 100% business. Although it's in harmony yep. with our ministry, that is ran from a business perspective. I love that, dude. And one of the cool things about that is that it's often, and again, I don't think when people say those who can do and those that can't teach, because there's a lot of people that are great coaches in sports, like your coach in football, that probably wasn't as talented as some of the people playing football, but they were great at teaching it. So the, the fact that you're able to do both, um, I also believe in that when you teach something, you get to learn twice. So you get to learn new things when you teach someone else, because you have to communicate it in a way that works for them. And oftentimes that is not easy if you're a practitioner, like you were the one who grew to 3 million just on one platform in 12 months. That does not mean that you know how to communicate that skill to each different type of person from the 60 year old minister that's not on any social platform all the way to the 19 year old zealous kid 
you know, mm-hmm. that's, that's trying to blow up on TikTok. So I, I think that's really cool that you guys were able to bridge that gap and do it. So you guys have the results of it as well as teach it. And obviously you guys have had awesome results there. If you could just break down, just in case there's some guys listening that, that may be interested in that, break down how people can work with your guys' company in that way. Because obviously you have the results. I'm assuming it's something around done for you, done with you and do it yourself. Here's how you do it yourself. Here's the kind of tips and tactics and kind of course mm-hmm. style. Here's how we can do it with you and kind of coaching alongside. Do you guys do a done for you where you do all post-production, manage accounts and all that or not yet? No, the only thing we do done for you is my team will make like channel art or thumbnails. I have uh, different options for that. But actual content creation, we do done with you and do it yourself where we actually empower you to create the content on your own, where we have our core four, which I cover your mindset, how to have the mindset of a champion, where you're actually looking to reach people, how to have proper vision, where you realize the possibilities of reaching people online. If you've had any unction to reach people in the gospel, which we have a lot of kingdom business people that jump in that they're very passionate about business, but they want to use the marketplace to reach people with the gospel. So we have a lot of business owners uh, come in from that perspective. And then number three, a content. I teach you how to package viral content. A lot of people think going viral on the internet is like lucky or happenstance. But over the last four years, we've been able to break it down to a science. And we've put together what I call my viral video framework, where we just take your content, we package it right. And then the fourth pillar, we put it into our viral video framework strategy and show you how to blast it on all the different platforms and uh, reach the millions by the grace of God. I love it, mm-hmm. dude. And and on both sides, right? It's like, I think it's so needed on the ministry side. Pastors are preaching every day, like every week at least, right? But inside of preaching, they're also creating a message throughout every week mm-hmm. that if they were to even just take their preaching or take all the points that they're making every week and just film content on it. I haven't seen any of your client's stuff, but I'm assuming it's very easy. They're already doing a lot of the work. They got the knowledge in their head. And if they just did it the right way, then it'd be great. And then also on the business side, right? For these business guys that are out there, it's like, okay, there's going to be other business teachers. You talk about Gary V, great dude. Yet there's always going to be someone teaching the business. Why, why not have God raise up a leader that's teaching social media marketing like Gary V's business is in and covertly or overtly or whatever the correct word is for that, be preaching Jesus because people can tell that you walk with Jesus. Like, not just by what you say, but also just who you are. Like, they should be able to see the glory on your life and notice there's something different about this guy. And so uh, I I just want to hit on those two things. I think that both are absolutely phenomenal. You have this framework for going viral. We have YouTube, TikTok, Reels on Instagram, Reels on Facebook, and then we have all the LinkedIn and stuff that you could still post on all of that. All of those are the same type of content. Kind of break down for me, if you have a new person come in, which platform do you have them natively start out on? Like, hey, we're going to make YouTube first. So I'm just assuming because that's what I would, that's the best platform. If I go back in time, I'd go YouTube. Mm -hmm. YouTube first, then we're going to distribute to every platform. Kind of walk us through your checklist of how you help someone go from idea to growing to 100,000 followers in the next 30 to 90 days. Yeah, totally. So I'll use a great example. We just had a guy, a pastor from California. Uh, his name is his friend of mine. His name is Alex Meadows. And he grew from zero, literally zero. I th- actually, I think he had 600 that he had like grinded for for two years on his YouTube channel. He had 600 subscribers, basically zero. And uh, with those 600, he grew from the 600 to 1.7 million in 90 days using this strategy. But Jeez. the way that we do the way I work with it is I bounce between platforms and I'll explain what I mean. So he starts on YouTube. This is what we'll do. I have people come in like you mentioned and we'll say, Hey, we're going to primary focus on YouTube. But here's the thing about YouTube. The algorithm is very delayed. So YouTube being a a large platform, the most uh, video watch platform on the planet, because it's a search engine, it's the second largest search engine on the planet. Because it's so massive, it takes the algorithm a lot longer to trust you, I've realized. Whereas TikTok, you could just go on there, 12 year old can do a dance, and then all of a sudden they're viral when they wake up in the morning. YouTube is not as trusting. And so what, what we teach them is get the strategy down. We teach you how to make viral short 
uh, ver- or short form vertical content, get our strategy down, kind of get a feel for it, focus primarily on YouTube. And then once you get the strategy down, focus on whatever platform is seeing the most increase. Now, don't stop posting on YouTube because the content that I teach you how to package, you can post on all platforms, which is the beauty of it. So that guy, he grew 1.7 million on YouTube, but he also grew a half a million on Facebook and 150,000 on Instagram in the same time period. So what happened was as he was blowing up on Instagram and Facebook in the first 50 days, he only grew 10 K on YouTube. But his Instagram grew 100,000, his Facebook grew two, 300,000 in the first 50 days. So I had him shift his focus to those platforms while he's still posting kind of passively on YouTube. And then once the algorithm catches back up, you transition back over. And then from day 50 to day 90, uh, he grew one, basically 1.69 million subscribers in those next 30 days. So that's the way that we handle someone that would come in new. We kind of just ride the momentum. Whatever's working, ride that, double down on it. I call it my double down strategy. We double down on what's working. And then as things shift in the algorithm, we just move and adjust accordingly. So good, bro. Thank you for sharing that. And when I look at what you're talking about, one of the questions that I know business owners will have is they feel like, well, yeah, I could go on and just create one. They're afraid of negative content, especially like we don't want to like just use hooks and, and things that are super negative. That's always, even for me, I'm like, dude, I just don't want to rip people and like have to create all these crazy thumbnails that are, don't feel great Two, like, how does it contribute to the business? And like, meaning also for a ministry, like they want, they're, 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 they're using social for an objective, right? If it's to reach the loss, then they want to know, are we reaching the lost? Or are we being entertaining the kids? We don't want to be just entertaining the kids. We want to reach the loss. Mm-hmm. What's the balance between that, that you found with like, you know, people go online. I'm sure that guy was posting content that was good for the last, however long that got him to 600 subscribers. But what do you think the main difference was that got him to 1.6 million? Was it the content? Was it the frequency? Was it the, I don't know. I have no clue. And like, how are you making sure that it's contributing to the main goal that the people have? Because again, I feel like, you know, if I, I posted my son, let's say, and I posted my son's video and it probably has over 2 million views with like 500,000 likes. But that is never going to get me the people that I like to reach, right? Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I know I could just keep posting a pick stuff on my son all day, but like my goal isn't a million followers on the platform. My goal is to build a million of the people that I feel like God's called me to influence. And how do you find that balance? And then also, what's the difference, do you think, from that guy 600 to 1.6? What was the difference in content, content, frequency, et cetera? Totally. Well, this is the basic framework that I run people through right when they get started. Number one, I ask them three questions. Who is your dream viewer? Who do you know that you're called to serve? Who who is on the other side of the camera? How old are they? What gender are they? Are they saved? Are they not saved? Are they a business owner? Are they not a business owner? Uh, Are they in the United States? Are they not in the United States? So we narrow down, we get as niche specific as possible with who you feel called to actually serve and reach online. Then number two, what's your dream piece of content? What kind of content do you see yourself making the most and actually enjoying it? Do you like short form? Do you like medium form? Do you like long form? Do you like audio? Do you like music? Do you like teaching? Do you like entertaining? We find out what they would really love to do and enjoy doing. And then number three, what's your dream topic? If you could preach or teach one topic every day till the rapture, every day until you die, what would you love to talk about all the time and never get burned out about? And I take those three things and then I tell them, go find three to five creators that are already pumping out content and having success that meet those requirements. And what we're going to do is we're going to find out how they do it. We're going to put our own twist on it and make it your own. And that seems to be the most success because a lot of people, they'll just start posting content because like a Christian might see if I listening to Gary V's podcast, 
this is what I did actually. This is a prime example. I got onto TikTok and because I listened to all this business stuff and I, I listened to the word I could preach, but immediately I thought, oh, Gary V, business, marketing. Therefore, I started TikTok about business and marketing. But that wasn't what I wanted to do. It wasn't what I was called to do. I had to identify those things on my own. So the first 30 days I posted on TikTok, I had no success. I think I had like 300 people follow me, no success. The moment I made the shift over, I found someone that was posting content like what I felt called to post. The moment I made that shift, my first video got 275,000 views and it was off to the races yeah. because I, I identified the bullseye. So that's the key. Don't You don't just copy what you think it's supposed to look like. You want to identify what direction you're going, find someone else that's going in that direction and kind of hook your bag, your wagon to them. And you can, you can kind of ride the way they've already had success. And that seems to make the biggest difference. So good, man. What key metrics are you guys tracking weekly or monthly for your clients or telling them to track to, to see progress, like things like impressions, engagement, what are you guys tracking? The two most important analytics to keep your eye on are number one, your click through rate. And then number two, your watch time. Those two are the most important no matter what. Now, other things will vary your engagement, your likes, your comments, your shares. Those things, they do matter, but they're, they're sprinkles on the, on the ice cream. The two foundational things you should pay attention to all the time and get the best at is your click through rate, meaning someone sees your title, they see your thumbnail and they click through to watch your video. And then number two, your watch time. So these are the two metrics that my strategy primarily focuses on. How to guarantee someone clicks on your video and how to guarantee they stick to the end, if not watch it more than one time. And if you can get a watch time over about 85, 90% on short form content, you're almost guaranteed to get tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of views. And if you can just get very high click through rate on your videos, combine that with high watch time, I mean, it's you're off to the moon at that point. And that's where we see a lot of the explosion. And then the key is, here's the golden nugget, consistency. If you can't stay consistent with it, then, then it won't work. So I always tell people, I can give you the strategy. I mean, I could take the horse to the water, but I can't make them drink. So doing it just one time isn't really enough. You know, you can have one video that goes viral, but it, it won't change the name of the game for you. You have to have consistent viral content, consistent content that's going out on a consistent basis and consistently reaching people. If you can just double down on consistency, it might be a grind. You know, I grinded for nine months before I was able to leave my nine to five and actually go full time online. I, it was a grind. I'd wake up an hour early before work. I'd split my lunchtime in half so I could make content. I'd stay up an extra three hours at night to do live streams and pump out content. I know the grind. Trust me, I was in the hustle and uh, I, I know it, it. I ate dirt for about nine months. But it was worth every moment. And if I could go back, I would do it all over again because where God brought me now, I, I mean, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So it might be a grind. It might be a hustle. Anyone listening right now, you might be going through that exact season right now. Stay consistent. Now, one video has the capacity to change your life, but you need more than one. But it really does only take one video to really change things. I know a guy who posted 170 days didn't see any traction. I think he had a less less than a thousand on YouTube. 170 days posted four times a day consistently. On the 171st day, one of his videos went viral. Imagine a hundred. That's like a half a year without seeing any results. Imagine that. But then on the 171st day, he had a video got like 20 million views and it brought a surge of momentum through his entire channel, launched him up to a couple million subscribers, and his life was never the same. So it just stay consistent. Don't give up. I like what it says in Galatians chapter six. Don't grow weary in doing good for surely you shall reap a harvest in due time. So don't grow weary. Stay strong. Stay consistent. Your time is coming. So good, man. And that's crazy how impactful that one video is. I've never really even thought of it that way. And just how Galatians six, nine really hits on that as well. Like you said, so good. You talked about frequency. Just to give people watermark, I'm very big on like following process, or at least I would like to be. And, and I need a baseline, you know? So let's say people had resources. They have a full-time video editor. They're ready to go. You said that guy was posting four times a day. If you could give like, they have the capacity to do it, what would you recommend? If they're like, yeah, I'm willing to go all in. What's the, 
number that I should hit. I see uh, this guy that I thought was good in my list of people that are doing it pretty well is this guy like Ryan Pinetta, I think his name is. And he's yep. posting like five to seven times a day. Mm -hmm. So I was like, cool, like we're posting two reels per day right now. We're working up to three from our long form content. So this is my favorite way to produce content is long form and then create a uh, short form. And then now we're creating clips that we start this week. We'll come out two clips per episode per week um, that are the three to 10 minutes that I guess now you can post on TikTok, which is cool. So we're going to try that the three to 10 minuteers. Mm -hmm. um, for, for you, what would you say is the frequency? They want to be consistent. They're like, do I post once, twice? I have the ability to do a lot. What would you recommend? I would recommend finding someone that's had success in your niche and then copy what they did. So, so they did like five, you said, then you're like, cool, let's hit five. Exactly. If someone in your niche is having success doing five, hey, that's what it's going to take. Do five. Other people, if someone in your niche is having success doing one, just copy and paste, put your own twist on it. Because I mean, don't fix what's not broken. If someone's already having success with something, man, just double down on it. And then, I mean, don't don't eliminate the ability to split test. You know, like take a tie. If someone in your niche is having success with five a day, but you try three a day and you're getting more success, by all means, double down on that. But a great place to start, if you got the resources, find someone, two, three, I even say three to five people in your niche that are having success and just copy what they're doing. Copy their framework, put your own twist on it. And uh, if it's already working for them, it'll work for you. And I noticed you guys use, how much do you guys focus on thumbnail? Obviously for big YouTube videos, but even I see some of your shorts, you're using thumbnails. Whereas I saw a little bit less maybe on Instagram. What are you guys doing and seeing from thumbnails and also hashtags? Are these like that important? That's good. So the way I look at hashtags is they're kind of like the sprinkles on top again or the cherry on top. But everything with going viral, for anyone that wants to know how to make viral content, there's not the, the click-through rate and the watch time are the two biggest components, but I can't say that any one thing determines whether or not a video goes viral. The reality is it's a bunch of little things done perfectly that cause a viral yeah. video. You just have to identify what the little things are. So hashtags is a part of it. Hashtags is a great way to, or to fill in whatever keywords you weren't able to put in your title. So you want to make your title as gripping as possible with enough keywords to get you in the algorithm, and then you make up for it in your hashtags. That's the way I look at the hashtags. And uh, what else did you ask me? I'm sorry. And then you, I talked about with when it came to thumbnails, obviously yes. click-through rate, we're going to be looking at, you know, how and, and watch time. What are you seeing work on those? Is thumbnails a really big deal as well as mm -hmm. watch time? Are you just hooking them in the beginning to try to get them to watch as much as possible, keeping it very engaging? 85% is a lot. So if there was two tips to kind of end on the on this probing of me trying to get everything out of you. <laughs> on click-through rate and watch time, what are the two things that you're seeing work really, really well that we could implement to try to increase those two things? Yes. So for your click-through rate, I, I mean, if you like study the biggest YouTuber on the planet, Mr. Beast, uh, when he goes to his seminars, people get irritated with him because he'll take an a he'll take 20 minutes to teach on uh, many other things that people want to hear about. And he'll take an hour and a half to teach on thumbnails. And then someone actually asked him one time at a live event, why are you spending so much time on thumbnails? And he said, because without a good thumbnail, no one's even going to click your video to give it a shot. So the other yeah. stuff is important. Having a good hook in your video, having the, the right strategy to increase your watch time is crucial. But the most important thing is your thumbnail and your title here. I'll give you I'll give you some free bonuses for, for YouTube shorts. If you want to go viral on YouTube shorts, this is how you do it when it comes to your actual click-through rate. The click-through rate on YouTube shorts is different than long form because people are typically scrolling through the what used to be called the For You page. Uh, they're just scrolling through shorts on YouTube. So your hook is actually a part of your thumbnail with YouTube shorts. And this is how I, I tell you how to, how to have a great hook or a great thumbnail more or less with a YouTube short. A person, place, or thing. Start your hook with a person, a place, or a thing and numbers. Those are the four things that really spike a person's brain. And you want to be shocking. You want to be different than the person, uh, the, the normal average Joe that people are just scrolling past all the time. So for example, I had a series that I really enjoyed doing on YouTube. It was seven signs that Jesus is coming back 
much sooner than you think. So that is like a loaded sentence. There's seven signs. Many people probably didn't even know there was one sign, but let alone seven. So numbers really get the brain thinking. They're like, man, I want to know if there's only seven. They don't know if there's more, if there's less, which ones they should know. It's going to make them watch the video. But in the first three seconds of the video with your hook, you want to have, I use the green screen effect. So if you can have green screened or B-roll, however you do it, if you have an editor, you want to have that person, that place, or that thing that's an, an awe factor in the first three seconds of your video. So for example, I would say these are seven signs that Jesus is coming back much sooner than you think. And I'll have a video of like the end of the world behind me or a B-roll video of the end of the world or a picture of the rapture or something or end time Bible prophecy where immediately you've just taken them and put them into the story. Now they're a part of the story that you're actually telling in your video. So whether it's business, whether it's ministry, anything in life, I'll tell you the most valuable skill you can actually have on the planet. Be able to tell a story. The most used skill, as old as time can be, even the Bible itself, is how to tell a good story. If you know how to tell a good story, you'll never lose an audience. And it's audience first before sales. I mean, you have to have an audience to convert them anyway. So if you can learn how to take what it is that you do and package it into a successful story, you will you will never lack an audience. An audience wants to hear a story. Think about how many times you've listened to testimonies on YouTube about someone who was in your same exact position financially, but you saw that they got out. They started at the bottom, they grew up in the projects, but now they're driving Lambos and they have multi-million dollar businesses. How much more do you love those stories than just a typical sales training or something like that? People connect emotionally to a story that's relatable to them. So if you can make yourself relatable to where you were, where you are and what happened that got you there. If you can put that in the short form content, be consistent with it, have a good thumbnail, have a good hook, then uh, you'll, you'll have success with short form content. Bro, so good. Thank you for the the master class. I'm just sit, I'm sitting over here taking notes. I'm scrolling through your your YouTube as as I'm sitting here talking to you. I'm taking notes on my phone. I'm like, and I already know that the, we're going to have this fully transcribed to go through. So I thank you for that. You've added good complexity to your model. You are just TikTok, YouTube, every platform preaching Jesus, just like sharing the stories, just reaching tons of people. I don't even, what's your, you, do you track all your impressions? I don't know how many people you're reaching every month right now, but a lot, right? Yeah. I mean, we used to, I could probably pull it up right now, but the key is this no, is something, have, but like millions of people, right? You're reaching like millions and millions of people. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the thing <laughs> is about YouTube impressions, this is what many people don't know about the algorithm. For every unique viewer, YouTube actually gives you seven impressions. So we have 9,500,000 uh, impressions this last month. So yeah, 9.5 million, so you're reaching, reaching lots of people. And, mm. and so my, my question is you added the business side to helping other people do the same thing. How difficult was that for just like managing both now, like, did you ever go, well, am I supposed to create some content about this? Like, do I make a video about the business side and is it going to flop because that's not what my people normally hear about? Did you have to separate it? Are you just keeping it totally separate? Well, how does that fit together? Oh man, it actually went so much smoother than I thought it would. Where originally I was like, well, be simply because I knew God told me to do it. You know, like I wasn't I wasn't coming off as like some sleazy salesman that was like, all right, now I'm going to use my Christian YouTube audience to make a ton of money. But it was actually like an idea from God where the Lord said, show other people how to do it. And I mean, even if it were up to me, the finances aren't even a, a big thing to me. What I realized, I would let people do it for free. Like I would totally train people for free. And there were people that I had trained for free on how to do this. But what I realized is that if it didn't cost them anything, no one was invested. Like I scholarshiped one guy into the group. He left the group in like seven days. So something that took me four years to build and these things that I realized, unless you actually charge people, no one gives a rip like that. Oh, I got it for free. So I'm just going to jump it and they won't take it seriously. So I, I started to charge for it, which I'm very thankful because people now you can see they're taking it seriously and people are getting great results. But I, I mean, I was actually so impressed. I just went on Instagram one day. I did a, an Instagram story. I said, hey, look, this is what I feel in my spirit. I'm going to start showing people how to do this. We're going to do a live workshop. If you want to join, let me know. I think we had 60 people in our first live workshop that I put together in 48 hours. 
Uh, and then we brought in like a ton of people that jumped in right away, did a live pitch at the end of the workshop, had a bunch of people jump in. It was awesome. And then we've just been growing from there. So I think because it's so in harmony with what I'm already doing, it wasn't too hard to make that transition, which is going to be a key factor for anybody uh, that's a Christian influencer or getting into that realm as well as business. Ron, thank you for charging. I remember I was in Russell Brunson's inner circle that created ClickFunnels for three years. And he told me the story that like, impacted me so much, which was what does what costs more? And he talked about a guy that he grandfathered in. He had a $25,000 mastermind and a $50,000. And he had grandfathered someone in that was like his best friends. And he realized that they were the only ones who made no progress during that year. Yeah. While everyone else who invested, they were making the progress. And so to me, it was that what costs more, the person who got it for free and didn't grow at all, or the person who invested and massively grew. And when you start looking at it that way, you're giving them something for less because it's giving them something so much bigger in return. And that is just like why, not, I don't know if you know this, but 97% of people by the age of 65 are either dead or dead broke relying on their friends, family, and government for their main source of income. Mm -hmm. 97%. Insane. Just the 3% is just not relying on friends, family, and government for their main source of income. So this is why there's such a small percentage because no one's taught this stuff. So thank you for also being obedient in that because I know it's it's not simple to do. Thank you for dropping wisdom for everyone. Where's the, where's the best place that people can connect with you directly, whether they're like a ministry that wants to get connected to your guys' content to go crazy viral. We heard 600 to 1.69 million, I think, in like no time. That was crazy. Uh, or to follow your content in general. Yeah, you can find me on basically any platform at Taylan Michael. Michael is my middle name, so T A Y L A N dot Michael M I C H A E L. Uh, if you want to connect with me personally, Instagram is going to be the best place. That's probably where I'm the most reachable. Uh, or you can just go follow me and actually check out my content on YouTube at Taylan dot Michael. Yeah, and that was also a last tip right there was that if you want to connect with the crushers in the world, Instagram's the way to do it. So thanks so mm -hmm. much, man, for serving the audience. Absolutely. Hey, it's been an honor to be on and, and uh, I bless everybody. I believe this will be your best year yet in Jesus name.